Hello everyone and welcome to another New World video. We're going to be talking about an MMO discussion in this case, uh, just asking a question, is New World's content too difficult? This video is inspired by a conversation my friend and I, Chris, have been having, and we're going to actually be having this conversation on an upcoming podcast over at work to game So if you guys are interested in more of our MMO discussions as a team, you can always go check out the podcast we film Mondays and Tuesdays. But beyond that, I'd also like to point you over as a part of the Twitch campaign. If you ever come check out the streams, you can always just type in drops uh, in chat and it will give you this beautiful link. Clicking on the link itself will help confirm that you are set up and accessible for Twitch drops. Just make sure everything is linked and ready to go and you should be able to have a good and fun time. So be sure to stop by chat, type in drops, hit the link and you'll be working your way towards all the different Twitch drops that they have integrated into New World. And this will also apply to the other games that Amazon's gonna be publishing this year and beyond as well. So be sure to check us out if you're interested in more content. But now let's get to the root of this video and this MMO discussion. At the heart of this video, I'm asking the question, are clears expected? And there's a positive and a negative for both of these connotations. Uh, the positive in this case is that you get content that you and anybody can kind of get together and just kind of farm up. The negative, the cost of that kind of mindset is that you'll quickly hear that the content becomes boring and dull and you end up just kind of expecting a face roll in that. The other question this video is asking in relation to that is that has other games who have chosen this design decision negatively affected games that choose not to. And Elden Ring would be a good example. New World clearly is an example of this. Has the decisions of other games that have similar type systems set incorrect expectations? Now the player who has the expectations isn't wrong. Imagine speaking English your whole life only to go and find that when you think you're going into a place that speaks English, they speak their own version of English and the two just don't communicate well. We've seen this happen throughout all of history. And I think language is the best example case to use in this discussion because as much as we think we're all saying the same thing, we're not. We're saying two completely different things, but we're starting to try and bridge that gap. And the only way we can do that is with real examples that we know from our history. We have to learn to translate. And I think essentially that's one of the things that I see happen when you start to look at somebody's MMO lineage. Where do they start and what was their training point? And I think essentially you kind of see the genre diverge across two different paths. Like if your genre, if your entry point, if your training into this was the sandbox, you end up having different expectations. Maybe you go Arc Age, maybe you like RuneScape, Final Fantasy XI, uh, you know, like obviously <laughs> Ultima Online. In my mind, I keep thinking Elder Ring, but it's uh, EverQuest in uh, in this case that I was looking for. And so you might have one track. If you're coming from WoW, you might have a whole different track that more theme park. And I think it's really interesting, especially in maybe of its own discussion for New World where it ultimately will fall. I do believe the future of this genre itself is going to be the sand park, the sandbox and the theme park married together, but that's not going to be without its growing pains and that's not going to be without its translations uh, as well. But is New World's content, is it too difficult? Are the clears to be expected? And a lot of these systems interrelate to each other. New World has a player driven economy. This means that a lot of the items uh, that you need can be bought, can be sold. The things that you can get from uh, the expedition runs are also tradable on the market for the most part. Not everything uh, is. And honestly, I would rather a system be bind on equip than bind on pickup. But, you know, again, I'm not the designer uh, of the system here. But when it comes to New World and when we see with season one, we're seeing objectives that want you to clear something like the Ephurian Forge, which is going to be a challenging expedition and for new players who are returning or you know like getting hitting 60 or just returning to the game who haven't been running the expeditions they're probably going to be at a slight disadvantage is the content required and that's the argument and really the crux of the discussion because from everything we've seen it isn't but if you're trying to 100 percent the content then it is if you're trying to expect that the base level the entry level of expeditions is clearable then you're immediately going to find yourself 
at uh, a loss. You're going to be set up to fail because the expeditions themselves, even the entry level ones, aren't designed that the clear is the most important thing. It's going to be satisfactory. Like when we talk about trade offs and design decisions, one of the things that we said is that when you're face rolling on the content, eventually it gets bore, bored and dull. But when the content is pushing back on you and is challenging, sure, that's going to turn people off as well, but it's going to turn them off for a completely different reason. And it does end up keeping the content itself more fresh. I think like beyond just the discussion of this video, there is a deeper discussion about incentives. There's a deeper discussion about how to get people to group up and, and challenge these things together, uh, you know, without being necessarily so gatekeeping. And that in and of itself is, is valid. Those are valid points uh, to the discussion. Um, but we're again focusing in on the content now i put out a poll on the channel itself if you guys want to go check the community tab you guys can go vote is it too hard is it just right is it too easy and difficulty when it comes to gamers like all of us we're all going to have a different set of criteria for what actually makes things difficult what is difficult for me might not be difficult for you and what is difficult for you might not necessarily be difficult for me and i like how mmos especially ones that have that more blend of with a sand you know box do offer like multiple different avenues i'm not always thinking that everything has to be the most efficient path but like what i've kind of made the point is that new world's expeditions aren't there uh, there is an equivalent to a like a just a like a strike in destiny or like a dungeon that you just kind of queue up and face roll in in another like theme park mmo they are harder content there are more top tier content and maybe that's in and of itself the game isn't effectively communicating that this is harder content. There is no matchmaking. And because there is no matchmaking, the content can be harder. If you add in matchmaking, the content has to immediately get easier. Otherwise you just create a recipe for toxicity. You have to take away player choice. You have, there's so many things that like matchmaking in and of itself can be a very costly endeavor. Uh, and a lot of people are easily willing to sacrifice uh, and, and pay that cost for its convenience in this case. So really the, the other question this video is asking you guys um, is should there be a more baseline entry level PVE match made style content that players can jump in and enjoy? And to that actually, I would, I would say yes. I wouldn't want them to do that with the expeditions personally. I like how expeditions push back. I like how there's different wall bosses. I like how you get rewarded throughout the entire expedition not just at the end of it, thus making any run somewhat profitable, even if you don't get the clear, because I like how when you get the clear, it is even that much more satisfying. It is that much more enjoyable as opposed to having it expected that, of course, we're just going to win. We're just going to show up and the game is just going to lay itself down for us. I think that if we lose that, we, we lose something that makes a new world unique. One of my fears has always been that new world becomes just another instance simulator MMO where people just kind of stand around, wait in queue, do content and then get bored with content and then complain that the content's boring all the while continue to advocate for it to be boring and to be, you know, less. But that's again my perspective, right? Like I'm not saying I'm right, I'm not saying you're wrong if you disagree. I'm just engaging in this MMO discussion so we can further along the idea of what should this be? What feedback should we provide? So I would be all on board with advocating for a PVE match made style content that is in expeditions. And I think honestly, the best contender for this, and we, they talked about this in a recent dev update uh, regarding instance wars and, you know, that being able to queue for kind of a practice war, it'd be really kind of fun to be able to queue up for a practice invasion. And you could have that training wheels. You could have that content that right now is locked behind a difficulty curve, but you could say, hey, you know what? We're gonna just match make. We're just gonna have some fun with this. This is gonna be a good training ground for all these systems that maybe you haven't engaged with. And we're gonna make it a little bit rewarding so that if you don't want to engage in the expeditions and finding a group, we'll go ahead and find you a group for this piece of content that you guys can enjoy as well, which gives you that wave-based defense, you know, kind of aspect. So that's the thoughts that came to mind. I think I appreciate the difficulty level and how it adjusts in the game because that's essentially how i've been rooted in terms of this i've seen actually people think that i don't like hard content because i don't necessarily engage in all of it and that really just comes down to more of a restriction on my time as a parent and a gamer so i choose to engage in the systems that both i find enjoying but also don't necessarily make 
me feel like I'm working a second job and abandoning my family to do so. And that's just on me. You don't have to follow my life plan. Uh, we're, we'll be just fine. <laughs> and we can agree to disagree on that. But I do enjoy difficult content. I do enjoy when I get the time to do it. And I do like when games push back on me on a player because it helps me learn the system. It helps me dive into seeing what I'm doing wrong. When the game just makes it so that I'm winning all the time, I never engaged in anything further. It's just like, well, I'm, I'm clearly doing everything right because the game isn't telling me I'm doing anything wrong. And that's one of the things I respect about Elden Ring. That's one of the things I respect heavily about New World. That's one of the things I enjoy, you know, as a gamer, interestingly enough. But anyway, guys, questions to you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and the discussion in and of itself. And uh, we'll have to do a follow up as well to this video because I'm very curious as to your thoughts. So thanks so much for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you'll see it in the next video. But until then, take care.